Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What up, what up, what up, what up? I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. <laughs> All right, it is college football preview time. That's right, we've already knocked out the MAC East, the MAC West, Conference USA East. Today, CUSA West. Uh, we're going to go through the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, North Texas, Rice, Southern Miss, UAB, UTEP, and UT San Antonio. If you are a fan of any of these schools, comment in. Let us know what you think. Uh, you're probably going to absolutely rail on us, and that's okay. Hey, some what, of these guys are going to like us a lot. Uh, some of you will actually, yeah, you'll actually love us a lot. But uh, just saying, feel free to rail if you think we're completely wrong. That's fine. We are used to it at this point. But we're going to give you our honest opinions. We like to be transparent. We're not going to lie to you. We're just going to tell you what we think. I'm not afraid of being wrong. Nope, you got that right. We, uh, we've been wrong a lot, and that's okay. You miss all the shots you don't take. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on any of your favorite podcast apps, uh, Apple, Google, Spotify, whatever. Leave us a nice review. We would really appreciate that. It helps out the show. It helps get it in front of more people. We appreciate you guys for supporting the show. Go check out betnow.eu. They, uh, they sponsor the show. They support the show. They help us out. They treat us right. They will treat you right. Use winning 50 for the promo code for a 50% deposit bonus. It's great sports book. Great online layout. Like, it's easy to find everything. If you're a recreational gambler, that's all you can ask for, right? Good odds and make it easy. And they do that. So go and check out betnow.eu. Use promo code winning50 for a 50% deposit bonus. Chris, let's fire into this bad boy, Skip Holtz and the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. Louisiana Tech, eight and five last year, five and three in conference. They return five starters on offense, five on defense. Skip Holtz, 46 and 33 in six years. He's got no CUSA titles. They lost defensive coordinator Blake Baker to Miami, which is That's a big job. That's a big job. That's, so it's Manny tough Diaz when, liked him. Yeah, when when big boy, big boy programs come calling for your coordinators, yeah. that's, that's hard a big to deal. Uh Bob Diaco. Takes over. Yep. Uh, he look. They lose uh, all four starters on the line from the number twenty-seven total defense in the country. Third-year starter, senior quarterback Jamar Smith is back, but I mean this team didn't break twenty points in three of their last four games. Uh, they were all losses, by the way. Uh, Jalen Ferguson, defensive end, he leaves after setting the NCAA record for sacks. Uh, after the Texas game, they're going to be favored in probably six of seven before November, but. Like, they lost a bunch. They got to replace a really good defensive coordinator. Skip Holtz, for whatever reason, even though he is a good coach, he cannot seem to get over the hump. I think he cannot get over the hump again this year. I got him 6-6. Six and six. I got him going 3-5 and five in conference. Okay. I, think, I think they step uh, take a, a step back here. So I, I like this program. I like this team. I got him going eight and four. I like Skip Holtz. I think he'll figure this thing out. I just think they have talent. There's a lot of talent in the state of Louisiana. Yeah, no, there is. And and they're gonna replace a lot of guys that left. I can I, I, can I don't know who that. they're gonna replace them with. I just know that they're they're getting anybody that didn't go to LSU in the state. Yeah. They they're getting. Um that's where you'd rather go play. And, that makes sense. and I I think Skip's a really good coach. I think they'll figure this out. I can't tell you anything about the new coordinator. I just know that that he's going to have some dudes to work with. Yeah. Now, yeah, they lost some NFL guys, and and that's going to be tough. But I also think they're just a tough school. That makes sense. I mean, Ruston is a it's a it's a rough place, right? Yeah. Like I, I love Ruston. I absolutely love it. <laughs> I don't know that I but, use the word love. No, no, no. It's it, like it's. You ever been down there for a game? I've never been there for a game. It's I've a lot of there. fun, man. That, that's, I've been that's in the a, area. That's a tough town, and uh, I just I, I think this year is is one of those six and six kind of years okay. where they're they're trying to get everything back on track, and I think next year they will be right back up there in the thick of things. There are there are three teams in this this side of the conference that I think have a chance to be three of the best teams in the conference: North Texas, the Mean Green. Nine and four last year, five and three in conference. They return eight guys on offense, five guys on defense. Seth Luttrell, he turned down the Kansas State gig. He's 23 and 17 in three years. And I think he was right to turn down that Kansas State job. They they yeah. tried to tell him who was going to be on his staff and whatnot. Yeah. 
If you're going to hire a guy, let him hire a staff. That's the way it goes. So, uh, new offensive coordinator, Bodie Reeder, comes from Eastern Washington. Them boys put up some numbers over the years. Good gracious. Uh, quarterback Mason Fine is back. They've already started a Heisman campaign for him. Have you, you heard Whoa, about this? I didn't know that. Already? Yeah, yeah they started a Heisman campaign. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little... Look, they were number 20 in total premature. offense last year, number 26 in scoring offense, uh, number 12 in passing offense. They got a 3-3-5 defense that improved from 35.0 points per game scored against in 2017 to 24.2 last year. They replaced three starters on the defensive line. That was number 18 against the run, so I don't think they're going to be as good, but they are getting better transitioned into that 3-3-5 scheme. Look, running back uh, DeAndre Torrey, uh, Torrey uh, will be a big name. He fits perfectly into this passing offense. He's going to put up some massive numbers. I like North Texas here. I, look, the record may not say that. They've got a brutal schedule, but I've got them going 8-4. and four. I've got them 7-1 and one in Conference USA. I've got them winning this division. I think having that senior quarterback, Mason Fine, look, here is, here's what they got to deal with, okay? They got Abilene Christian to start out with, and I got them winning that one. Then they've got at SMU, I've got it as a loss, at Cal as a loss, UT San Antonio at home, that's a win, Houston, I've got that as a loss with Dana Holgerson's bunch. Then you got a bye week, then you play at Southern Miss, who Jay Hobson's bunch, great defense, all that. I think they match up well. I think Southern Miss wins that game. But then I think North Texas wins every game from there on out. Middle Tennessee, at Charlotte, UTEP, at Louisiana Tech, at Rice, UAB. I think this offense is legit. I like wow. North Texas. Okay. I got them 7-5. I don't think they're a bad that's team. Only, that's only one game off for me. Yeah. I, I don't think they're a bad team. I think they're a good team. I, I don't in any way have them winning this division. Don't in any way? In any way. In any way? In any way. That's crazy. I That's think a, the coaching discrepancy in this division between... I think Seth Luttrell is a really good coach. I'm not, I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that. I think if you gave me a top 10 or 15 coaches in all of the country, Bill Clark is in that list. But so, I'm guessing Seth Luttrell is not. not. Not top 15 across the country, no. No, you're probably right. You're probably right. I do like Seth Luttrell, and I do like the fact that he's got Mason Fine at quarterback. I think having a senior quarterback that has been through it. That's a big deal. That no, is a massive deal. Not going to discredit that. Seven they, and five, I think they're going to be a good team. And they get UAB at home to end the year. And I think that will be for the division, and I think that they win that game. And now they lost at UAB 29-27 to last year. That's right. Very crazy game. It was really fun to watch. Uh, UAB, I think, will have as good a – we'll get to UAB here in a little bit, but – I think UAB could have a better record and not be as good as they were last year. Okay. So, and I think the schedule has everything to do with that. Maybe. So, um, all right. So you've you've got North Texas what seven and five? Seven and five. Okay. Let's move on. This one should be pretty quick, I believe. And if you are a fan of the Rice Owls, I apologize right now. I'm sorry. <sighs> Two and eleven last year. One and seven in conference. They return six starters on offense, seven on defense. Head coach Mike Bloomgren, like, I like Bloomgren. You know, I, I like what he's trying to do. He's in year two. He's trying to install the uh, the Stanford model. It doesn't really fit Texas. You know, it, it's tough to recruit guys to the – and I'm not saying it's tough to recruit, like, smart guys. I'm saying, like, they do, like, air raid, and, and they like to, to fling the ball around a little bit in Texas. And the Stanford model in the Houston area – I don't know if it fits. Like it, it, it didn't. It looked very, it looked like this was not a very organized team last year. Uh, number one hundred three in total defense. They had to play a ton of underclassmen in two thousand eighteen, but they got seven starters back. Uh, the defense did improve a little bit. I mean, it, the coach this year said that the defense is is looking awesome in spring. The quarterback battle is down to senior grad transfer Tom Stewart from Harvard. And redshirt freshman Wiley Green. Green played last year, uh, but they, you know, the four game thing to keep your your year of eligibility. They did that with him. Uh, running back uh, Juno Otoviano. Jumo, I like that name. Uh, he's going to be super exciting. Like this dude's going to be able to do a lot. 
Absolutely brutal schedule here at Army, Wake Forest, Texas, Baylor, Louisiana Tech, at UAB to start with. I think once you get hit so much to open the season, it is very difficult to come back from. This schedule is brutal from top to bottom. I can't find a single win. I hate doing it. I got him goose egg. I got him 0-12. I hate doing it. I did the same thing. We talked about this before, right before the show. We, we we go over this every time. We we never really talk or compare notes until we get here to do it. Yeah. And I just I, – I always try to find one win. And I thought before I even went into it, I'm going to have him beat UTEP. I'm going to have him win that game because that's the only game I think is going to be close or that they have a chance. And then I saw that is at UTEP – that is senior day for UTEP. UTEP's yep. not losing that game. Yeah. I can't I can't I can't all find their, a win on the schedule. All of their toss up games are on the road. And toss up is a very loose, loose yeah. word here. I mean it's I just I can't find I'd, anywhere. I'd love that, to be wrong, because watching kids play that hard, practice, prepare, put the hours and time in that they put in to come across with zero wins is just hard to swallow. It's but it's this is one of those teams. This is one of those teams where they probably could have found a win. Yeah. But instead, they took some checks. And they, yeah. if you look at the top half of their schedule, Whew. they took lots of checks. Well, that's it. Army, Wake Forest, Texas, and Baylor. I mean, that's that's some tough stuff, man. And if you're going to take checks, they could have found, you know, a lower division team, brought them in. Something to get some confidence. To going. get a, to get a win and get it early. Yeah. And they said, nah, we'll just take the money. Yeah, we'll take and the money. And you know what? I kind of like that. I mean, cheers to them. Like, it's a, take take the money, but man, it's a, like you you gotta to get out of a losing culture. You have to win at some point, so you gotta be able to schedule some wins sometimes. Uh, and they they have not done that whatsoever. Rice, uh, we both got them zero and twelve. I mean, if you went to Rice, comment in, tell us what we're missing. Like, because I'm just I cannot find one. Or if you just need a place to lament, it's a yeah. safe spot. Hey, yeah, we're safe. Yeah, just talk to us. We'll we'll help you out a little bit. We'll talk you through this. We've been we've been fans of some bad teams. Yeah, Chris was a fan of the of the Browns when they went zero and sixteen. Y'all only got twelve games. They had sixteen. That's right. So now the good thing is, you know, Bloomberg gives you a little bit of hope. So maybe things can turn around. Maybe things can turn around, but I don't think it's happening this year. Southern Miss Golden Eagles six and five last year. Had to have a game uh, canceled because of the hurricane and whatnot. Correct. Five and three in conference. Returning starters, they got seven on offense, six on defense. Jay Hopson, 21 and 16 in three years. He has finished above 500 all three seasons, but the Art Browse fiasco back in February has kind of made it where patience is wearing a little thin. Like, this man needs to win. He, he needs to win. Don't give them a reason to fire you because I'm telling you, after you went out and called out the president and everything of the school. But you noticed they didn't fire him. They didn't because it was an odd time and no, everything else. No, I think they think this guy's a good coach. Hey, I, I mean, he, he was at Alcorn before. He's like He won there. I he's think been he's pretty a, good here. I think he's a good coach. I think he's a good coach. But, man, that was a really boneheaded decision. This not, is, not the Art Browse thing. Like to, to Whoever just, wants to bring in Art Browse, that's fine, whatever. But, but make sure your, your administration is on board with it. Don't be talking crap about your administration. Even in if public. they're not on board with it, and you try to do something on the slick, and when you get called out, don't don't invoke your religion to yes. defend a bad decision. And you can't talk trash about your boss. Yeah, publicly, you can tell your wife whatever you want. Yeah, you can tell your buddies at the bar, the other coaching staff, any, anything you want. But you just can't talk trash about your boss publicly. Believe that. Believe that. Look, this team had the number three. Three. That's one, two, three. Total defense in 2018. They got some real bodies on defense. I think this is one of those three teams that I said in this division, in this conference, in this division. Yeah. That I think are really, really good. Oh yeah. I think this team is good. They I uh, like Southern Miss. I mean, they got some some real, real bodies on defense. They cornerback Ty Williams, safety Kyle uh, uh, Healy, like this bunch. They got SEC dudes on defense. I agree. Like they got some real deal guys. Dudes that didn't get in. The, to Ole Miss and Mississippi State. Yep. They're going here. Yeah. Uh, junior quarterback Jack Abraham battled injuries in 2018, but he did lead the country in completion percentage, so that's a, a step in the right direction, 
Uh, brutal opening schedule. Look, they they open up with at Mississippi State, at Troy, at Alabama. Yeah. Uh, but slight improvement on offense can make them a contender for this conference. Absolutely, make them a contender. I don't. I don't know if that Troy game is not at Southern Miss. If it wasn't on the road, I think they win that game. I think they can I win the game where they, it is. They could win the game at Troy. I, yeah, I think they. It's could. not going to be an easy game. No, I, it's I think be a tough game. Yeah, but it's not a. It's not just an easy loss to throw up there. I've I've got them seven and five. I got them six and two in conference. Um, I've got them losing. So I've got them beating Alcorn State, losing at State or losing at Mississippi State, losing at Troy, losing at Alabama, but then a win over UTEP. Win over North Texas, win at Louisiana Tech, win at Rice, a loss to UAB, uh, a win at UT San Antonio, a win uh, against Western Kentucky, and then I've got a, a loss at Florida Atlantic. So I, I I think this is a legit team, absolutely legit team. I got them eight and four. That's I, a, I really, wouldn't surprise me. I really like this team a lot. I think they've got some talent. You talked about it. I think they've got some talent. And I think there's only one reason you don't fire a dude that openly calls you out publicly. You believe it's, you got something going. It's because you think winning football games is important. Yeah. Yeah. It's the truth. And it, and it really is. I think there's some alumni out there that were like, I don't care what he called you. <laughs> I'm going to call you worse if you fire the guy. If you fire my guy. So I, I just – I think he might not have the administration, but you can't say the things that he said – and try to make the moves around their back if you don't know that you've got the alumni support. Yeah. You so while right. you don't have administrative support, you've got the money people. Yep, you got that right. And you got talent. Yeah. I, I like this team. If I wasn't in love with the other team, then then they would have been my pick to win this division. I got them third in the division. But that's six and two behind you know yeah. this next team in, in North Texas. The UAB Blazers. Eleven and three last year, seven and one in the conference. They return three offensive starters and five defensive starters, which the numbers don't sound great. It's right? Tough, tough to do. Bill Clark, twenty five and fourteen in three years here, should have a P five job by now. Um, and I don't know if he's turned them down or if he just hadn't, you know, gotten called up for him or whatever. Twenty eighteen was a really deep, mature team. They had some JUCOs. The rules were a little bit different. Uh, there's a ton of upperclassmen on this roster. There's some experience. Uh, lost most of the talent from a, a already subpar offense. Um, the rules were changed because, I mean, this is just the third season. That they had a team. That they've even had a team. You talk about trying to replace all those guys. Yeah. Three years ago, they had to replace a team. Yeah, it's uh, where most people get like 25 scholarships per recruiting cycle. That's right. I mean, they got a bunch more. They well, were able well, to bring it was, in. It was the yeah. first, it, literally starting a team from scratch. Yes, and there were a bunch of JUCO guys, and there were a bunch of and and look, that's going to weigh because they were mature and deep, and they had talent, and they've still got some of that. They still got a lot of that, but it is tough to replace this many starters. Um, look, at the defense finished number nine in total defense last year, number seven in scoring D. The schemes. Obviously, are solid. Uh, I mean, watch defensive end Garrett Marino this year because you're going to love this kid. Uh, the schedule is manageable, even with the trips to Western Kentucky, Southern Miss, and North Texas. Uh, I like Bill Clark. I think he is. I think he's probably the best coach in this conference. Maybe not probably. How about this? He is the best coach in this conference, and this team may not be as good as last year's team. But the schedule sets up so well. I think they go ten and two this year. I think they're seven and one in the uh, in the conference. Same thing. Got ten and two. Got them seven and one. I got them winning the division. Got them winning the conference. I I don't like Bill Clark. I love I love <laughs> Bill Clark. I really really do. And I'm not trying to have UAB lose their coach, but I want Bill Clark at a big school. I want to see him on national yeah. TV games. I want him to get credit that he doesn't get. Yeah. That's all I want because half of the country, 80% of people who follow college football really close, don't know who this man is. Yeah, and, and they I, should. I think that's a shame. I think he's absolutely a sensational coach. I do agree with and that. And I don't, I don't know if he's turning job. I wish I had the information on who's actually interviewed him and is he telling them no or, or are they just not offering him. 
Because I'm going to tell you, and those athletic directors, if it, they chose to not offer him, the day and time is going to come where he takes over a program. And they're going to see how good he is at yeah. a big boy school. And then they're going to look at the people. The fan base is going to look at the athletic directors that interviewed him. And say, you and, had an opportunity. And passed on him. Yep. That's that. If I was an AD and I passed on him, I wouldn't tell nobody either. Because I think this guy's special. I really what he did starting this thing literally from the ashes and doing what they've just gotten better every year over and over and over again. I well, don't and no, see he that doesn't. Going he away. doesn't fit what a lot of people are looking for now, which they Offense. want the young, they all want the offensive, young guy. offensive guy. Bill Clark is a, an older defensive guy, and it doesn't help and, that every old uh, defensive guy that's been a great defensive guy that's gotten a job in the last like five years has flamed out in three or four. Well, okay. okay, a lot of it has to do with where they get hired, right? I mean, it's uh, location matters in this thing. Maybe you're probably right, but I think if he got a big I, boy I think, job, I think and if he Bill just Clark, hired one of these young stud offensive geniuses, I, I, I think, man, that's just a combination that yeah. I would take. Bill Clark understands it, but like if if Bill Clark goes to UTEP, no, no, you know, and I don't think he would have. Obviously, he came from Jacksonville State, yeah, but like. I mean, you go to UTEP, it's probably not going to happen, right? It's it is what no, it is. No, he's not so, winning the conference. So location, but I'll tell you this: he's doing a hell of a lot better than what UTEP's doing. Maybe. I mean, he's doubling that schedule, that record. I don't know, man. It, 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 that's tough. That's tough to do down there. I don't know. I think he's a really good coach. No, I, I agree with you. I think he is. I, I mean, think, I, I, think I think he can he's, win there. I think he's elite level coaching. I really do. might be over exaggerated. I mean, you know, I. It's just how I feel. I know, and you are passionate about this man. I really and am. I, I can and, I, and I'm it. really bothered that nobody's given him a job. It just it really bothers me. Well, because I mean, I've look, seen some terrible coaches get jobs. It, this guy goes ten and two this year. I, I guarantee you people will be calling. Let's move on from there. Let's finish up and uh and wrap up with the last two. UTEP, the University of Texas at El Paso Miners. They went one and eleven last year, one and seven in conference. Returning starters, they got seven on offense, five on defense. Head coach Dana, uh, now I don't know how to say his last name. Dimel, you, Demel. You've done really well with names. I don't even, I can't even remember like Kerry and Curry. Well, wait, when you know we're what's having NBA talks? You okay? know what's crazy about this? You, you do really well with names. <laughs> Dana, I'm going to say Demel. Good. Uh, I'm for it. He's in his second year. He came from Kansas State. I didn't even think about the fact that he was Kansas State's offense coordinator under Bill Snyder. So he's the guy that made uh, uh, Colin Klein, like the big name back in 2011, 2012, whatever it was. Uh, Senior quarterback Kyle Loxley, that's Mike Loxley's son, you know, the new uh, Maryland coach. Uh, He was injured twice last year, but he showed a lot of promise. Uh, There were spots where this offense really came alive. They lost at home to open last season by 20 to Northern Arizona. That's a team that finished 4-6 and in D2. I think that they're going to be a little better than that this year. I think they'll open up and they'll beat Houston Baptist. There's very little talent on the roster. They do have some experience, but I just look, they've got nine offensive linemen that have started before, so that's good. But good gracious, I, I just don't find a lot to like about this team. I do think the coach is moving in the right direction. I think there will be progress. I, I, I've got them a game better than they were last year. I've got them at two and ten this season, one and seven in the conference. We're exact same. I got them two and ten. So it's so I, I a found, little better I than found what they were. Another win, but it's just tough. It's yeah, it's, it's very tough. I, I think last year, I mean, you beat Northern Arizona last year. You're two and ten, so may as well, right? UT San Antonio. Let's jump into that one. This is the last one. We're out of here, and then we're out. UT San Antonio Roadrunners. Three and nine last year, two and six in conference. Returning starters, they got six back on offense, six back on defense. Frank Wilson, he was supposed to be the next big thing, right? Like he's he's the recruiting guy, but look, and he's recruited well here. Yeah. But recruiting has not led to winning. He's 15 and 21 in three seasons. The first year was the best year by far. Offense was dead last in total offense. Uh, but quarterback Frank Harris should give them more of a passing threat this year after he missed 2018 with a knee injury. The defense fell off the map after Pete Golding left for Alabama. They were number 96 last year. They were number five in the country in total defense in 2017. Uh, Defensive line runs eight deep. 
Uh, let's see. Jared Carter, Macklin, and Lorenzo Dantzler are the two that you need to know. They're replacing both linebackers in a 4-2-5 scheme. That is not a good thing. I, I got them going 3-9 and nine again. Frank's got to figure out some way to get this thing turned around. They got talent. Exact same record, man. I got them 3-9. and nine. I, I, I don't see them improving. I don't see them falling backwards. Um, maybe they can improve a game or two. If they improve more than a game, it would shock me. Yeah, but I mean I, that's that's I think that's where we're standing. They've got talent. Like I know they got talent, but man, this schedule like it so they get incarnate word, right? But then at Baylor, Army, at North Texas, at, a win at UTEP, I think. Then they got UAB, a win against Rice at home, and then at Texas A&M, at Old Dominion. You you got to go from San Antonio all the way out to Virginia to to face Old Dominion in that offense. You got Southern Miss, Florida Atlantic, and at Louisiana Tech to wrap up. Like, where are the wins coming from? I don't know. Like, everybody else in the conference is getting better. They've got talent. You got to do something with it. So, if Frank has is, is got to improve, I don't think he does this year. I think it's three and nine. I think they might give him one more year after this, but I think that's about it. Who, uh, Who'd you have winning it? I had North Texas winning the division. At seven and one, and then but they beat UAB, who also had seven and one in the conference. I got UAB with a better record, ten and two, but North Texas uh, winning the division, and uh, and I got Florida Atlantic beating North Texas to win conference USA. I okay, got UAB winning the division, UAB winning the conference. I can I can understand that you Bill Clark guy. That's right. All right, we appreciate you guys. Remember, share out the show, uh, leave some comments, tell us what you think. If we're wrong, we're wrong. We've been wrong before. We love you guys. We appreciate the support. We'll see you around next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.